I was out shooting some guns with my friends the other day. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmmoMart.com. It's another not beautiful day in Northwest Ohio, but it's always a good day to be back on the range. Today what we're gonna do is test the stopping power of the 10 millimeter auto bullet. As you've noticed on our channel before, we're gonna try to closely mimic the FBI standard with ballistic gelatin and distances, and hopefully our chronograph will agree to cooperate more than it typically does, but bear with us if it doesn't. In the previous video, we talked about the history of the 10 millimeter and covered some of its uses as a concealed carry weapon. As you may or may not have noticed, I've managed to hurt myself since we visited last, so I'm going to invite a good friend onto the show, a co-worker of mine at Ammo Mart, Philip Pendle. Hey Rodney, thanks for having me today. No problem, Philip. I'm glad you could stand in for me. Philip's actually a very, very well experienced 10 millimeter shooter and all of the weapons that we're gonna use for the demonstration today, he actually owns. So I know that we're in pretty good hands. For those of you that aren't familiar, we're gonna start off with our normal setup a ballistic gelatin 15% at 10 feet, and we do have the required clothing for the FBI standard. As always, we're gonna put three jacketed hollow points in the bottom part of the gel, but first we're going to use some what most people would consider to be range rounds, all of them weighing 180 grains. In our previous discussion, we had kind of touched on the idea that a lot of 10 millimeter automatic ammunition on the market today actually closely resembles the 10 millimeter light load. So what we're hoping to determine is whether or not that's actually true and if there's a difference in power between a jacketed hollow point that I know actually does mimic the true 10 millimeter recipe as compared to range rounds that might be a little on the light side. Not only will we get some feedback with the ballistic gel, but I'm hoping Phil, who's an experienced 10 millimeter shooter, can tell us if there's any difference in the recoil impulse that the shooter feels. So let's see what we get. Ready? Yep. So this will be top of the gel, left to right. Clear. Great, so Phil's made the weapon completely safe. Now we're gonna head down range and see what we developed down here. So, it would appear that we have a very nicely mushroom ground there. And it's hard to kind of tell. I'll let you step in there, Phil, so you can see at home. By initial examination, it actually only looks like there are two that remained in the gel. This one skipped out. Yep, so this was an errant one off to the right. So, and we have a skipper out here for one of the top ones, so that's why there's not as many impacts as this is actually a driven miss, sort of a skip. You can see where it exited the top here, Phil. Yep. And the bottom ones, we do have three strikes, and it would appear that one of them might have exited it clear here at the bottom. So, we do have two. We'll measure all of this out as we normally do, but this is going to be about 15 or so plus inches of penetration. Hard to tell right now, but the bottom one here is excessive according to FBI standards. I would say well past the 18 inch mark. So definitely a hot bullet, maybe too hot, depending on what you value in the ballistics world. When we initially tried to fire the first three rounds that were the range rounds or the full metal jacket, 
two of the three of them had a high, high, slightly high strike. So what we're going to do is redo those two shots using the same bullets. One will be an SMB in the middle, followed by a 10 millimeter round from Buffalo cartridge. Okay, let's re-examine the ballistic gel. So as predicted, once we came a little bit lower with our aiming point onto the gel, we have one that stuck. This would be the one from the Buffalo cartridge, the 10 millimeter round, and it would appear that right at the edge of the gel, came a tumbling down the second one from S and B. Now, you'll notice this is an S and B round and clear at the end of the second piece of gel is another one. Unfortunately, when you mass produce bullets, no matter who makes them, you do get some inconsistencies with velocity and pressure. Could be an explanation for that extra push. But remarkably, all of this would be considered over penetration by the FBI. What I'm excited to do is go examine it compared to the 40 Smith & Wesson demonstration we did and see how things sort of line up side by side. One thing is painfully clear, the 10 millimeter is an awfully powerful bullet. So Phil, you fire dozens and dozens of different types of 10 millimeter rounds. Let's start with the full metal jacket. Did you notice any discernible difference in the S&B compared to the 10 millimeter from Buffalo cartridge? Uh, a little bit. The the Buffalo cartridge had a little more snap to it, but um, they're pretty much the same aside from that. More or less the same. Yep. So what's interesting about what Phil just told us was that the 10 millimeter cartridge felt a little more powerful to him, but it actually didn't penetrate as far into the gel, which is one of the anomalies that you find doing this type of testing. Now let's move on to the full metal jacket. Okay. So the first one was the 180 grain from PPU. We know what the result was. Did it feel the same compared to the other two? And did any one of them stand out? The three of them all felt, felt recoil was pretty similar. Uh, all three of them were, were much snappier than the, the target rounds that we did test. Which is what you would expect yep. from a well-made self-defense round. Mm -hmm. But to you, all pretty much the same. Between the three of them, between the three self-defense rounds, they all felt pretty similar. And interestingly enough, the gelatin would completely disagree with that statement. The 170 grain round from PMC completely exited both of the ballistic gels. Now, some may tell you that's exactly what one didn't want. You want to stay in the 12 to 18 with some good mushrooming and retained weight. Didn't happen with PMC. Now, I'm not saying that PMC is a bad bullet. What's interesting is, is he notices no difference in recoil impulse, but we get radically different results on the gelatin. As we've done in the past, in this portion of the video, we're gonna do a magazine dump with a Glock Model 29, of course, in 10 millimeter. Philip Pindle here is a very experienced 10 millimeter shooter. He's owned the gun for years, and he's actually gonna operate his own guns. As we've discussed, I've managed to hurt myself, so we wanna give this a fair test, and I don't think we could be in better hands than Phil. So I'm gonna step out of the way, and whenever he's ready, we're gonna do the magazine dump with the Glock 29. So now the hard part, like we've done in previous demonstrations, Phil is going to test the stopping power of the 10 millimeter round at 50 meters. 50 meters was important when handgun rounds were being accepted by the military because they had to prove lethal at that distance. As always, we're not going to use a rest. Phil's just going to offhand shoot it at 50 meters. We're going to start with S and B full metal jacket rounds, progress us on 10 millimeter from Buffalo cartridge, and then we'll put in some jacketed hollow points. So let's see how Phil does. OK. 
good shot, Phil. He looked under it. That one looked like it was dirt. And before we had the That's low and left. Low left. Low but center. Low right. So you're empty. So this is the distance looking back that we covered. You can kind of see the tripod from across the way there, 50 meters. And as Phil can tell you, it's a little bit of a challenge to go with six by six block. We did record two hits, one with a full metal jacket and the other with a jacketed hollow point. The jacketed hollow point, if Phil wants to come up and give you guys a view, is right here and interestingly enough the full metal jacket round exited both blocks of gelatin which is awfully impressive at that distance a ferociously powerful little round what do you think phil i like it kind of a challenge huh yeah it was you did well very difficult and right now we're going to be driven in by some inclement weather so let's move on with some final thoughts and of course some dead poultry I'd like to leave you with some final thoughts about the 10 millimeter auto pistol rounds we've demonstrated here today. As you can tell, we used a wider variety of bullets than we typically do. And what I was hoping to illustrate is one 10 millimeter bullet is not the same. You noticed a wide array of power in the same cartridge. It's incumbent upon the user of this caliber to research and know exactly what it is he's getting. And it's very difficult sometimes to tell that based on recoil alone. As Phil noted, the round that he felt was the snappiest actually penetrated the block the least. That could be related to speed and a lot of other factors, but rest assured, all 10 millimeter rounds are certainly not created equal. Having said all of that, it is an extremely powerful round and importantly, extremely versatile. There are a lot of different weights available in that caliber and depending on what your preference is in a round, it will absolutely cover every shooter's needs. Hopefully we won't come away with the idea that it was too powerful because it over penetrated in the gel. Thanks for watching. Don't be afraid to like and subscribe. Okay, before the rain drives us out of here, we're gonna get some shots on the chicken here. I think he's dead, Phil.